Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. Aaron Summers here. We are quickly approaching another game day in the Dome. Saints, Eagles, 12 o'clock. If you're not there, you can watch it on Fox, but I really hope you're going to be there because the Saints are expecting their fans, all of you, to bring it. Here is cornerback Marshawn Lattimore on why he just loves playing in the Superdome. I'm excited. You know, that's the best place uh, to play. I'll play that, you know, me personally. So I can't wait. You see me? Home for the Vanets. You know, the fans, they come out and show support every time. And, but we love it. You know, we feed off that, and I can't wait. So we all know when the Saints fans get going, that dome field advantage is a real thing. It has an effect on opponents, and it's just so much fun to be in there. There's so much energy. Here's head coach Dennis Allen and linebacker Demario Davis on the effect the noise has. I definitely think that the dome has an effect um, in a lot of different ways. Um, it has an effect on our opponent in that it's, it's hard to hear. So it's hard to make adjustments or hard to make checks. Um, you're going on a silent cadence generally, you know. Um, so I think that's, you know, challenging for the offense. I think it, it provides a little burst of energy for us, um, both, you know, offensively and defensively when the, when the crowd's working like it is. I never worried about the city by the end, man. I mean, the team breathes the city, the city breathes the team. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a New Orleans thing, so I never worried about the fan base. Um, I expect the electric atmosphere this Sunday, and so I'm excited about that. How exciting maybe are you, especially that maybe being an advantage for the defense, of just how much the dome could be rocking? No, that's important for us, um, is to get back to that dome field advantage, um, you know. So winning at home helps that, and that's what and that's what we got to be able to do is uh, uh, we got a good team coming, coming to our career. Uh, we got to go out and play some good football. I am definitely looking forward to it. And since Lat will be back on the field, I'm not surprised that he's looking forward to it as well. Yes, there is no injury designation for Marshawn Lattimore heading into this one. Taysom Hill, A.T. Perry, Landon Young, Will Harris, and DeMarco Jackson are all listed as questionable. The only Saints player out for this one is Colin Saunders. The team is very healthy at this point and getting healthier. For today's guests, we have a double feature, NFL Network and Compass Radio analyst Brian Baldinger and Fox play-by-play -play Joe Davis. Both will be on the call for our game on Sunday against the Eagles. Baldy will be on Compass Radio and Joe Davis will be on the Fox broadcast with Greg Olson and Pam Oliver. Let's kick it off with Baldy. Brian, thank you so much for joining me on the New Orleans Saints podcast. I have been loving all of your tweets about us this week, breaking down film. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, Aaron. I, I appreciate you, uh, you know, watching and paying attention. It means a lot to me, but they've been a lot of fun to break down. So, I mean, it's uh, things have started off very well. I saw something about Rashid Shahid in one of them, and he has been a, a very fun player to watch over his couple of years here with the Saints just because of his speed and his ability. But how are the Saints maximizing that right now? Well, I mean, you know, you got to take your deep shots to him. I mean, he's got... I think he's got 11 touchdowns right now, Aaron, in three years of like 45 yards or more. Nobody else is close to that. It reminds me of Deshaun Jackson. Like you have to call his number like they did, you know, from the 30-yard line against Dallas last week. He ran right by both safeties. Derek threw a perfect throw. But, I mean, you just see this deep speed that, I don't know, like I don't know if people underrate him or underestimate his speed. I can't believe they still do that at this point. I think the guy has another gear that a lot of people don't have. And then when the ball's in the air, there's really another gear if he has to go get it. And so he is a bona fide deep threat and opens up this whole offense. I think people have been surprised to see that Derek Carr can hit him on some of those deep routes as well. How is this offense making Derek Carr look as good as he's playing? Well, coaching matters, Aaron. Uh, Clint Kubiak and really, you know, his father – uh, the Shanahan tree, his, his father coached with Mike Shanahan. He coached this system. It's a proven system. It's the best system in the NFL right now. And so I think that starts, but it's more than coaching. 
Um, I think drafting Taliesin Fuaga uh, has made two positions better, um, especially with the injury to Ramchek. So the left tackle is much better. I think Trevor Penning is much better at right tackle. And so I think the offensive line has come together and they're really good at what they're doing. And then all three backs are really healthy. And so well, I'm not sure about Taysom this week, but I mean, they really have a role for all three. And so it's good to see Alvin back healthy and playing like, you know, that he's like he played in early in his career right now. It's funny that you called Taysom Hill a back because yeah, that's where he's been lining up most of this season, which is different for him. How yep. much will it change things if he's not available to go on Sunday? Well, I mean, going back to preseason here, Aaron, you, you saw him at fullback. You know, you saw him at tight end. You saw him carrying the ball. You saw him as a lead back. You saw him in a, a variety of uh, in roles. And so, you know, this this system, this Clint Kubiak system, they always like to have two backs. They don't really have a fullback per se, so he's played that role. Um, I think it probably – I don't know how much it's going to be. I know that chest is, you know, is an injured thing, but um, I think they'll be able to – be able to move the ball. I think they'll play just fine uh, this week, uh, you know, against the Eagles with or without him. But he certainly gives them another dimension when he plays a variety of the role because you also always have to respect him as a passer and a pass receiver as well. This offense, new offense under Clint Kubiak, definitely wants to establish the run first. So they've been very effective with it on first and second downs, which leaves them short distances on any third downs that they're getting to. Going up against the Eagles defense that has had a rough time to start the season stopping the run, how do you see that battle kind of playing out? Well, if the Eagles don't fix their issues right now, Aaron, I mean, I know John Benton, the offensive line coach, pretty well. He's been in the system a lot. He ran the system in San Francisco and he was there. They tried to run it in New York. They didn't really have a quarterback, but he's he's he knows how to coach this up really well. Uh, the Eagles have had a lot of problems, Aaron, um, in a lot of things, but – I, I think they've had trouble in their alignments and especially in the run fits. And so until they get that fixed, they're going to have tr struggles. Now this, I saw the bears from week one to week two fix a lot of things that didn't look good against Tennessee, but it did against Houston. It can be fixed in a week, but every good defense is a gap defense. you got to be in your gaps and they've been very loose and very undisciplined. And um, they really struggled against both green Bay and Atlanta to this point. And if they continue to struggle, then New Orleans is going to continue to run the ball really well. Where do you think there is the the biggest opportunity to take advantage of the Eagles' defense and their struggles? Well, I mean, they've got a rookie corner out there, Quinion Mitchell. He was the first cornerback drafted, and he has shown flashes of the reason why you would draft him, number one, mm -hmm. um, because he breaks on the ball really well. Uh, he reads routes well. But he's still a rookie out there, so – in the two-minute drill by Atlanta last week, he probably didn't do the right thing on a couple of plays in a passing game that could have helped maybe. So, you know, I mean, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to see. Every week it's something different. He's going to see Rashid Shaheed. He's going to see Alave, who's a great route runner. I mean, he's going to get – I mean, I would think that they would test him out there. Darius Slay's on the other side. Uh, Slay's a very veteran player. Um, everybody in New Orleans knows him. Uh, uh, Derek Carr knows him. They've gone up against each other. Not that you shouldn't go after him. They beat him for the winning touchdown last week. But I would think that that's a, a vulnerability. And then they've had trouble just at the linebacker position. They've got two new linebackers in Zach Vaughn, who you mm -hmm. all know very well. But he's getting a great opportunity in Philadelphia to really be an every-down linebacker now. He never really got that chance off the ball like that in New Orleans. And then um, N'Kobe Dean's a young player that hadn't played a lot. And so I think – uh, I think you can attack both those players, whether it's in a screen game or flooding zones or whatever. But, I mean, I would test both those players right now. Alvin Kamara has done very well with that screen game. We saw a great touchdown by him in this past game. How have you seen him just excel with what Kubiak's doing and the positions that he's getting put in? Well, I mean, he's a rare you know, he's just rare. I mean, I always say he's like a cat on a marble table. You can't get him off his feet. Like, no matter what you try to do to him, the guy has incredible balance. And I've, I've seen his workouts. I'm sure you have too, Aaron. Like, nobody trains their core and their balance like he does. And it shows up. It shows up. Like, I don't know how he scored the one touchdown last week against Dallas. There was no hole. Right. There was no right. opening. And somehow he got through all of that 
and came out into the end zone. So he's got he's got a great he's got great eyes. He sees what he sees, which might be different. So his vision is elite. And then you know on the screen pass, like maybe only Cesar Ruiz could have caught him. You know, like he's got <laughs> open field speed. So um, you know he, he's always been a great receiver. I mean, Sean when he was there threw the, to him a lot, uh, an awful lot. And so he's got the ability to run every route, catch all the screens, all the checkdowns. And so he's a very versatile player, but he's got tremendous balance and vision. And I think that's the beginning of his skill set. How much is this offense predicated on getting Alvin going? Oh, I think I think most offenses, like if you look at Clint Kubiak, you look at his father and where he was in Baltimore. They, I mean, they got the running game going. It started everything. It still does in San Francisco. There's still a run first team um, that the, the people that are – Los Angeles went to the playoffs once they got Kyron Williams running. Once you get the running game going, and look, you have to look at what Johnson and Moreau are doing blocking as well. The two tight ends are sealing the edges. They're getting um, they're getting the line of scrimmage sealed, but it, it it takes everybody. Those tight ends are really valuable in the run game, but I, I think it's critical. I think it's critical to this whole offense. The play action passes, uh, some of the deceptions that they do, is, is all off the run game. And so if you don't honor it, they will make you pay for it. I saw that the Saints have run 70% of their snaps with car under center, which is grossly higher than anyone else. Why are they doing that? And what does it allow and open up for them offensively? Well, I think, I think we're going to see a shift in the NFL because the play action is just so much more real. When you are running that wide zone and you're sticking the ball out for the defense and you're trying to figure out at that mesh point, am I handing it to Kamara or Williams or is this going to be some play action pass off? Uh, it's just critical. I, I, I think, and then in any short yards and goal line situation, every back is better if they're eight yards deep and they get uh, the full advantage point of seeing the defense move and shift and overplay. I think it's better for the backs. It's better for the play action. And I think the quarterbacks, I think they enjoy it. You know, look, I, I think there's a place for the pistol where you can have vision to the whole field and still have play action. That's what Miami does. But I don't think this is going to change. I think this is the offense they're going to run right now with Derek Carr under center. This offense, you mentioned it at the very beginning, it's been a lot of fun to watch. Is the league going to catch up to what the Saints are doing at some point? And once they get more film on this new look offense? Well, I don't think they're going to put up 91 points, you know, in two games. Like, I, I don't think not? that's – well, I mean, they would set every record by, you know, by the time you got to December if they continued this rate. Uh, but, look, I mean, if the steep shots are there to Shahid like they have been, you got to take them. And if you mm -hmm. keep completing them at the percentage that they are, then you're going to put up a lot of points. But – I would say that the league knows this offense. They see it a lot in this league. There's a lot of teams that are running a version of it. I think uh, the key is really, and Philadelphia will either do this or they won't do it. The key is you've got to stop them on first down. you got to put them in passing situations. And so first down, stopping the run is critical. And so you better figure out a way to do that, whether it's eight guys up there in the box, whatever it might be. Now, the big explosive plays – a play action usually come on first down when teams overplay it. So it's, it's, it's a real chess match, Aaron, back and forth between, you know, whoever Vic Fangio this week and with Clint Kubiak, uh, there's a, a real built-in chess match about what the saints are going to do, but it's critical on first downs to get, you know, to limit them and limit the yards. we talked a lot about the saints offensively, but defensively, they're going to have one of their biggest challenges here in trying to stop Jalen hurts and Saquon Barkley Historically, the Saints have struggled against stopping the run. Last year, they were ranked 22nd against the run this year. However, they've moved up to third. So haven't had a big test yet. What do they need to make sure that they're doing to keep Jalen Hurts in check and not allow Barkley to run all over you? Well, um, you know, you got to play sound, run fit defense. And so, you know, DeMario and Warner, those guys, they got to fit. You got to fit with Shepard and, with the you know with Cam and with the guys up front, 
Um, you got to get in your gaps. That's where it starts. And then you really have to, you have to tackle well. Uh, and so, you know, whether it's Alante in the slot or McKinstry or Adebo, I mean, you got to tackle well. Uh, and it goes for, you know, for the both safeties right now. Uh, Tyron's playing great football, but I mean, you got to tackle well. And if you don't, then both those players, I mean, you saw on Monday night where Jalen, you know, when he decides to pull it down, um, not many people catch him and he's not going down. He's not usually sliding. He's going to take every blade of grass that you give him. And so, uh, you know, whether it's design runs by Jalen or scrambles, you got to have, you got to have all eyes on him, especially in the passing game. You can't leave the middle of the field open to go cover the receivers because he'll take it on. you. Um, but, you know, Saquon's a quality back. They've got the best offense line that you've seen so far. Um, this, you know, Mekhi Becton is in Lane Johnson, Dickerson and Malata, like those are, it's the biggest offense line in the league. And they're very athletic. They can get to the perimeter. So, you know, setting the edge, getting your gaps, like you've got to be very fundamentally sound against this group. What does Chase Young do for this defensive line? Well, he gives him great athletic ability. I mean, he's a great athlete. He can run and chase as well as anybody. Uh, he's playing a lot, a lot. He's playing a lot more now than he has at any point over the last two years more than he did in San Francisco, more than he did in Washington, I think. Um, you know, he's he's earned that spot to be that right defensive end, uh, you know, along with uh, in that rotation that they have right now. Mm -hmm. I even saw Cam play inside last week. Um, you know, so it, he's in that rotation. But he's just a guy that when the play goes away from him, like his speed, his ability to chase plays is elite. He's got great movement. Um, I don't think he's a great pass rusher. But if you give him the edge, like he's got strength and power to crush the pocket on you. Uh, but he's got he's just an elite athlete with great movement. And um, the more he's on the field, the more plays he makes. You tweeted most recently about the kickoff and what the Saints are doing in coverage there. What is unique about how they're playing that? Well, they're not willing to just give the ball to, at the 30 yard line. Number one. So they have four touchbacks so far, and they're, they're the highest scoring team in the league. So they've had more kickoffs than anybody, but they've only had four touchbacks. They're putting the ball in play right now. And what that tells me is, A, I always think kickoff coverage is an extension of your defense. It's mostly um, it's mostly backup linebackers, defensive backs, and safeties, mostly. Those are the guys, and maybe sometimes defensive linemen. It's a chance for them to go make a play, get off a block, and, you know, and last week you saw Dallas start, the, you know, at the 22-yard line. Well, it might not sound like a lot, but eight yards of field position makes a difference. Uh, when you start at the 30, I mean, you're, you're looking at a first down, you're at midfield, basically. And you're, you're thinking offensively that we, we, we got a chance to score here. If you're starting at, you know, inside the 20 or around the 20, it makes a big difference on can you generate enough offense to score. I like the approach. I think I'm not – I think some teams have just sort of said, okay, this is a nothing burger. We'll just start at the 30. Mm -hmm. I like the Saints approach that we're not willing to do that. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to, we, and look, you might give up, a, you might give up a big return. That's the chance you take. Um, it, it can happen. We've seen one return for a touchdown this league by Tampa uh, or by Arizona this year against Buffalo, but I, I will take my chances and let these guys go cover and just, and, and basically you're telling all those guys, that are dressed part of the 53, might not be starters, whatever, we give you a chance to go make a play. And I think J.D. Hill, some of these guys are saying, like, put it on us, coach. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go cover this kick, and we'll give you better field position than if you kicked it out of the back of the end zone. You are going to be here this weekend. You're on the call for this game for Compass Radio. What are you looking forward to most about getting back in the Dome? Just the life in the dome and the energy that it, it brings. And I don't know the last time I should know, but I don't know right now, Aaron, <laughs> the last time the Saints started off two and zero and had a home game in week three. I'm sure you know that, but I, I got to imagine that New Orleans and the, that town and knowing how much they love football in that town, they're bringing everything they got. And I've been in there for a playoff game. I played left guard against the Saints one day in a playoff game. I never heard my quarterback one play the whole day. I had to look at the ball to see when it was snapped. That's that's that could be a real handling the atmosphere. It could be tough for the Eagles on Sunday. So that's part of it. And then I just want to see. Like I live in Philadelphia. I mean, I know that team really well. I'm not rooting for them, 
But I want to see if they can fix this defense. It's been atrocious. And so can you fix this? They got a new defense coordinator who's a proven guy. Vic was a linebacker coach in the Dome Patrol back in the day for Jim Mora. Mm -hmm. He knows that city really well. He knows what he's getting into. Um, look, you can't ask anything more at noon on a Sunday to go into that atmosphere for a football game, regardless of what happens. But I know what it's going to be like. I, I know what those fans can be. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to the whole thing. Yes, so we're looking forward to it too. And the fans are very excited around town. So you're going to get the max dome effect, I think. But thank you so much for all the insight. And I'll see you Sunday. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. I look forward to seeing you. And I can't wait to get to New Orleans, honestly. I'm going to get a big bowl of gumbo. And I'm going to show up at the stadium ready to go. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. Take care. Thank you. You too. And now for Joe Davis. Joe, thanks for taking the time to jump on the New Orleans Saints podcast. We're looking forward to the game this weekend, having you on the call. But how are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing, Aaron? I'm doing awesome. It's been really fun few weeks here. Yeah. The city's very alive. The fans are really excited. So you've had a couple calls. You're getting prepared for the game. What are a couple things that you're really in, like looking forward to or anticipating in this matchup? I think just simply watching this offense, it's been amazing watching them from afar these first two weeks and uh, historically good first couple of weeks and seeing it all come together, but now getting to see it in person. And I've done a couple games at the Dome, but never when things are going like this. So I'm <laughs> so excited to go in there when the fan base is as jacked up as I imagine it is right now and, and feel that place shake. It's going to be something because it's been a while since I think they've been this excited about what's going on and the new offense under Clint Kubiak, as you mentioned, were you surprised with what the saints came out and looked like to start the season? Very, very. I, I, I mean, you, you would know better than me, but it just seems like the expectations were at best, like, eh, we'll see. Hopefully, be, hopefully a playoff team you know but like mm -hmm. they've they've been world beaters through the first two weeks and I know the offense is still in the headlines but the defense has been pretty darn good too so yeah I, I think that the Saints are as good of a surprise as there is in the league through two weeks then maybe how surprising was Monday night's game and the way that it ended for the Eagles I think the felt so we had the Falcons week one and okay. We were thinking and, and still do think the Falcons are going to be good. And they kind of laid an egg that first week. I don't know that we were shocked how it went week two, um, especially with A.J. Brown out for the Eagles. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Outside of losing your quarterback, that's as, as important of a guy that a team could lose. Just the way that offense is structured around big plays, and he's the best guy at generating those. So um, not a huge surprise. I, I think it'll be interesting to see how they play this week on the road, probably again without A.J. Brown, because they're a different team when they don't have him. Nobody around here wants to think about the Falcons being good. So we're going <laughs> to pretend you didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> but without A.J. Brown, it's a less dynamic offense for sure. And then more focus is put on the run. The Saints have struggled a little bit against mobile quarterbacks. Do you think that they'll be able to, to kind of figure out the Eagles since they're going to have to rely a lot on that run? Yeah, we'll see. You're right. They're going to, you know, Saquon Barkley is getting more than 20 carries a game. Jalen Hurts has gotten them before. It's been a few years since they've faced him, but more than 100 yards in what was his first start in the NFL, more than 100 yards on the ground against the Saints, and then three touchdowns the second time he faced them. Now, last year, he wasn't running as much, so it wasn't as big of a threat. But his last game, that was one of the bright spots of the day for the Eagles, was that he did start running again. So mm -hmm. certainly it'll be the first test in that regard for the Saints this year. Um, and, and it'll be interesting to see how they're able to slow him. In your conversations with maybe some of the coaches or players, what stood out to you on, on kind of what they're keying in on? They don't give us a whole lot in terms of, uh, you know, they don't like to share the secrets. Clint Kubiak, especially very straight lace, straight face. Mm -hmm. I want to give away too much. Um, one thing they did mention is that they anticipate the Eagles trying to get the tight ends involved a little bit more, which I don't think is necessarily earth shattering. But the fact that Dallas Goddard's name hasn't been brought up more 
especially as they've lost A.J. Brown as another source, um, I think that that there's something to that. that he's, a, he's a really good pass-catching tight end, and I think the Saints are keeping an eye on him, in, in addition to, of course, being concerned about, like you were touching on, Jalen Hurts' ability to run. Mm -hmm. How often have you covered games for the Saints or been here in the Superdome? It's been my third game in the Superdome, probably a half dozen Saints games total. And you're very busy because you also do baseball as well. And you had a big week calling some games, I think. Yeah, yeah. Shohei Otani's big game yesterday in Miami. So I had that yesterday afternoon. Took an 11 o'clock flight from Miami, landed in New Orleans a little after midnight, got to the hotel, won something like that. That you, you would be, I'm sure, proud to know the city was still humming when I got to the hotel. <laughs> Actually, I'd come here with my buddies last year, turned one of our one of my NFL games into kind of a guy's trip. And I took a picture of the hotel lobby bar and sent it to them because I knew they'd be familiar with it when I got here. It was after one o'clock and the place was still slammed. So it was it was rocking. I got up to my room, but there was still a pulse down there in the hotel lobby. Yeah, you're focused on the prep and what you have That's coming right. up on Sunday. I like it. How was Colin Otani's game? It was so much fun. So, you know, you go into the game not thinking it's going to happen on that day because it's two home runs away. And um, selfishly, I was really hoping that it would because I was leaving after the game and I was bummed thinking of the idea of not being able to call 50-50 with it happening over the weekend, most likely. So very selfishly, uh, it was extra special because I didn't anticipate getting to call it given where the numbers were going into the day. When you're calling a football game, what's your favorite type of play to call? Hmm, that's a good question. Ah, uh, trying to trying to give you a specific answer. I don't know, how about how about I'll give you one that Saints fans will like because there's a lot of this. How about a play action pass that hits deep over the top? I know we've yeah. seen much of that for the Saints so far. So you're coming in here hoping for a deep ball to Rashid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll take that. That's fun. <laughs> so will we? We definitely will. I what know. are you anticipating being? The, the problem for the Eagles defensively against this uh, high powered offense. Well, they've not been able to stop the run yet and the saints run the ball more than anybody. So, uh, you know, typically Vic Fangio's defenses are going to give you some run, but they've given up explosive runs and that's not supposed to be how it works. Supposed to give up some run, force you into passing situations and then be able to tee off with the pass rushers that they have. And they haven't been able to do that. So it's an Eagles defense with a lot of pressure on it to get better in a hurry, given what the Saints have done well so far. With that run game, a lot of talk about Alvin Kamara coming in to this season because of his age and is he losing a step? Is he not as effective? And I think he's proven to everybody that he's still got it. How hard is it for him to maybe keep that up week to week? And how important is it for the offense to have him playing at that level? Yeah, it's been cool to see so far those four touchdowns last week. I know he said afterwards, I wasn't aware that I was supposed to be getting old. At the, mm -hmm. Like, I, I know that was a narrative, but I'm not feeling it, he said. So uh, he's as exciting as anybody to watch when he's at the peak of his powers. And, you know, I know the touchdowns were down last year. He didn't quite look like himself. So to see a resurgence like this, maybe reinvigorated by the new system and the way they're using him, uh, it's I think it's good for football fans because watching him do his thing when he's right, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of talk here about what this team is going to look like when they face adversity and they don't get out to that big lead. But historically, what have you seen from you know, Dennis Allen and his teams and their ability to face adversity and kind of fight through different situations like that? Yeah, uncharted for this team, but certainly not for his teams, right? Mm -hmm. You look back to last year, that was full of adversity and fighting every single week. And they, they weren't blowing anybody out last year. So and it's a lot of the same guys. So I think that you get into a situation where it's a closer game, which probably going to be this weekend. I don't think that there's going to be anybody there that's alarmed by it or doesn't know how to react to it because it's guys that have been there before. I think this is more, I think the harder thing may be, Hey, how do you handle this success 
in you know this this cruising the way they have because that's the more unfamiliar thing i would think for uh, this generation of the saints it's hard not to look at the schedule and think okay the eagles you know they're beatable and then the next week it's the falcons and then when is the test going to real test going to come <laughs> right and i guess you look at kansas city down the road but looking at next week since you did have the falcons what's going to be the challenge there with how they're running things with kurt cousins yeah, they uh, that's uh, I really do think that they're going to be a problem for some teams. Uh, I mean, I, the Saints clearly have been more impressive through two weeks, but as Kirk Cousins gets healthier, I think you got to keep in mind he's coming off a really bad injury less than a year ago that he blew out that Achilles. But as he gets healthier, we know what he's capable of. And then there are weapons around him that they just haven't had a guy like Kirk Cousins to be able to properly take advantage of. So you can, you don't have to squint very hard to see that offense being pretty dangerous as well. I think that you, you know, second time the saints face them this year, they're going to be a lot scarier than they are this first time, just given Kirk cousins health and everybody getting comfortable with one another and in the new system. Sure. I guess I can allow that. We'll get them this time okay. big. All right. And then maybe it'll be a little tougher down the road, but we'll okay, still win, fair. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where are you going to eat? What are you doing while you're in town? Yeah. So I'm a big food guy. Um, I'm here. The crew doesn't get here till tomorrow morning. A lot of people, but I think I'm going to walk and uh, grab a little dinner, sit down at the bar solo somewhere and eat there. I may go to Herb Saint if you go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. I may, I may do that. Um, that guy's trip we went to, or we came on last year, we, we had several good restaurants. I don't want to repeat though. So I'm going to try something new. Yeah, you got to, there's so many options here, so you can't go wrong. And then you'll just have another favorite. There we go. Keep adding to the list. <laughs> I love that you made a guy's trip out of it because it is a popular destination for opposing fans, but I think that the saints are going to have this one pretty full on Sunday. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, thank you so much for spending some time chatting with me and look forward to seeing you on Sunday and having you here in the city. Okay. It's great to talk to you, Aaron. Great talking to both Brian and Joe today. For anyone going to the game Sunday, make sure you download the Saints app presented by Verizon. Once you download it, log into your NFL.com account and switch over to dome mode. This is really cool this season. You'll have all access to important information on how to navigate the Superdome. You can also watch highlights of your favorite players throughout the game so you don't miss any big touchdowns or turnovers. It is definitely a must have this season. It's really cool. You can search whoever you want and they will compile a highlight reel for you. So everything you need to know on game day is right there on your Saints app. So make sure you download it and then log into your NFL.com account. If you aren't at the game, tune into our pre and post game show on NewOrleansSaints.com. John DeShazer and myself will be there at 11 a.m. And then post game, we will be joined by Super Bowl champ Scott Shanley. Cannot wait to see everybody in the Superdome on Sunday in your black and gold. It is definitely going to be a fun one. Go Saints. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.